Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and uh, today I'm sporting the colors. I'm wearing the official Student of the Gun t-shirt, and you could be wearing one too if you went to studentofthegungear.com and ordered one, so just keep that in mind. Today we're going to talk about shoot to wound and what that means. Now, shoot to wound. People uh, have this strange notion that, well, if, I, if I'm ever forced to use a gun to, to protect myself, well, I'll, I'll just shoot to wound, and then that'll be okay. No, it doesn't make it okay. If you discharge a firearm at a human being, you're either A, justified because you were in fear of deadly force or serious bodily harm, or B, you are not justified because you haven't met the requirements to use deadly force. If you have a firearm in your hand and you threaten to use it against, uh, uh, you know, threaten to use it against another person, you are threatening the use of deadly force. Whether you discharge the gun or not, it's a threat of deadly force. That's why when someone points a gun at a police officer, the police officer doesn't have to wait until they shoot him to return fire. If someone points a gun at a police officer, he understands most of the time that, hey, that person may potentially kill me, so I need to shoot them quick, fast, and in a hurry. When you discharge a firearm at a human, it doesn't matter, it's immaterial whether or not they live or die. And you're like, oh, that's, that's mean, and that's not nice to say, and we don't like to talk about that. Here's the real deal. The real deal is this. If you discharge a firearm at a human being, at some point in time, your actions are going to be judged by either a grand jury, by a prosecuting attorney, by a judge, by a group of attorneys, what have you. They're going to examine your actions, and they're going to determine whether or not you are justifiably in fear of death or serious bodily harm, or whether you were not. If you were, then it is legally permissible for you to use your firearm against a human and for them to die, to expire. Now, people that are shot with handguns, most of the time they don't die. Something like 75 to 80% of people shot with handguns in the United States don't die. That's, well, number one, it's a testament to how good our emergency room medicine is, and B, it lets you know how poor handguns are as a killing tool. Uh, but that's not the whole purpose of self-defense. The purpose of self-defense is to cause someone to stop trying to harm you, to stop trying to do deadly force to you. Now, if you shoot them with a firearm and they stop and they don't expire, you know, they go to the hospital, they fix them, and they leave, good on you. They stopped. If you shoot them with a firearm and they do expire and you were justified, it's the same thing. Now, when you talk, people talk about, well, I'll just, I'll just shoot them in the leg and, and that'll stop them. Okay, well, know this. Shooting someone in the leg does not guarantee that they will not die. You know what you've got inside both of your legs? Big old fat femoral arteries. If you nick or open up or sever a femoral artery with a bullet and that person doesn't get a tourniquet on their leg in, within two minutes, they're going to die whether you meant to shoot to wound or not. That's not the point. Uh, and or I'll just shoot the gun out of their hand, you know, that, that kind of... If you think, I'm just going to shoot the gun out of their hand on purpose, you watch way too many movies and you need to get your butt into a professional shooting school. We don't shoot people in the hands and the arms and the legs because that's not how people stop. You can shoot people in the legs and they'll bleed to death in two or three minutes or in the arms or what have you, but it doesn't stop them from trying to kill you. And that's the whole point of self-defense, is to stop the person as quickly as humanly possible from trying to hurt you. So shooting to wound is, if you've got that thought in your mind right now, you need to get it out. You need to get your head right before you actually have to use a firearm to defend yourself. And you say, well, yeah, it's easy for you to say, but you know, if I, if I shoot to, to wound and, and, and we end up in court, then I'll look better because I can testify that I shot to wound. Here is the deal, Sparky. If you shoot them in the leg and they find out that you are not justified in using deadly force against that person, they're going to charge you. They're going to charge you with aggravated assault. They're going to charge you with attempted murder. They're going to charge you with 
any number of things and going on the stand and saying, well, yeah, I shot him in the leg, but I meant to. The prosecuting attorney is not going to say, oh, well, you're a good little citizen. I'm just going to let you go. If he finds out that your actions weren't justified, he's going to charge you and your I just meant to shoot him in the leg ain't going to fly because the attorney is going to say, no, you meant to murder him. You're just a crappy shot. It, shooting to wound does nothing good for you and a lot of bad things for you because in the heat of a deadly force situation when you need to defend your own life, trying to take meticulous aim at small parts of the body is not something you're going to be able to do. And if you have the ability and the calmness about you to be able to meticulously aim at certain parts of a body, you're probably not in fear of death or serious bodily harm. Think about that for a second. And that's what the attorneys are going to say in court if you ever end up there. So if you are justified in shooting a human, you are justified whether they live or die. If you're not justified, then it doesn't matter what you did. So keep that in mind as you move on through your day and your life. Now, what's the recommended reading today? Well, a lot of the stuff that I talk about on The Homeroom, I've also written about in Student of the Gun, A Beginner Once, A Student for Life. It's by, oh, it's by Paul Markle. And you can order signed copies from our web store. Just go to studentofthegungear.com and you can order yourself a signed copy. If you don't want a signed copy, you can order it from Amazon or Barnes & Noble or whoever. So, for all things Student of the Gun, where are you going to go? You're going to go to studentofthegun.com. Mm -hmm.